Today on the Hangout, Boogie Cousins gets a brand new coach in Sacktown. I hope it all works out for George Carl out there. Also, we got to go big game hunting with Gotta Be KD as the Oklahoma City Thunder take on the Memphis Grizzlies. And to wrap things up, DeMar DeRozan with a big shot to get the Raptors the win before the break. Basketball fans, welcome inside the belly of the beast that is the Air Canada Center. I am Akil Augustine, and this is The Hangout, Canada's favorite basketball talk show. And of course, we always have a slew of guests here to talk about the game we love so much. And we always kick it off with the producer of the Toronto Raptors games and the biggest Ironhead fan I know. He's the reason <laughs> I'm aware of Ironhead existing. Dan Gladman, Dan, thanks for joining us. Akil, thank you very much. All right, and then th we have two very special men. This is episode two for Montreal Mark and Sporting Phil. Gentlemen, thank you guys for coming down and showing the Hangout some love. Absolute yeah. pleasure. It's our pleasure every time coming out of Toronto. It's where basketball lives in Canada. We're trying yes. to spread the love all over this country. I'm glad you, you Montreal guys recognize this is where basketball lives, wherever I'm at. Well, it's starting. It's, it's starting, starting here. It's, it's going to spread. It's spread. You know, it's spreading, definitely. The love Going has expanded, everywhere. of course. The game is growing. And uh, right now, we got to get right into it. The Toronto Raptors, mm -hmm. second place team in the Eastern Conference, matched up with the third place team in the Eastern Conference at that time and period prior to the game, of course. John Wall's team sitting in third before the game, but the DeMar DeRozan went to work along with the rest of the group. There you see a nice pass from Otto Porter and the rare Paul Pierce dunk. But Lou Williams, finally, another good game for him. He'd been struggling of recent 27 points. Here you see Mr. Hilario putting it down at the rim. It was a close one down the stretch. But the Toronto Raptors had enough to get it done. Kyle Lowry, as always, clutch. One of, the, one of the weirder end of game uh, possessions you'll see, not the cleanest possession for DeMar DeRozan. You saw the frustration in his face. The Raptors win, of course, 95 to 93. They got the bucket they needed. First thing before we really get into the Toronto Raptors in discussion, though, let's talk about these Wizards. They were third going into the game. Now they're tied for fifth. And we've seen recently they've had their struggles. I think they lost five of six prior to that game. So. In total, it's like six of nine losses in their last nine games. We'll start with you guys. Let the Montreal guys chime in first. Are they losing ground, and do you see them slipping any lower than fifth in this Eastern Conference? I went in the Wizards' locker room right after the game, and this is every single one of them. They yeah. Hurt. They were hurt. They're hurting. When you miss a shot by half an inch, it's kind of how their season's been going. The mojo's gone. They don't know where they're headed. They don't know where to go. They may be dropping down. I think John Walsh has got to pull them together. It's a weird situation, right? Because, I mean, when we looked at the Eastern Conference at the end of last year, we thought, Wizards, Raptors, uptrend. Wizards kind of hitting the wall right now. Oh, I think the Wizards, in a lot of ways, have a whole lot of talent all over with Nene, Gortat, and everything. But the one thing I didn't see at all was any ability to defend the rim, really play consistent defense on any level. And I'm not even sure, I'm, I'm going to go on a limb that jo John Wall is really loving the situation. He looked a bit angry at some points. I don't know. I found he didn't he, have his boy Beal. He didn't have his boy Beal, but uh, their inability to consistently hit threes, uh, they went a bit more towards it towards the end of the game with Rashul Butler and such. But inside, I, I just felt like people are driving on him. Uh, they rebound really well with Seraphin, Good, and all these guys. They rebound with the wow, best. Wow, the of, rare Seraphin name drop. Okay, Dan, let's get to you. Right yeah, right. Let, let's not get too overboard about the Wizards right now. If you look at the Eastern Conference and what has happened in these first few months of the season, everybody, uh, maybe except Atlanta, has had a, a stretch where they didn't play well, where they lost a few games. You know, in that two, three, four, five, there's a lot of movement right now because, because of the matchups in the and schedule. It's tight, too. It's, a half it's game tight. There, there's not a lot of room there. And most of the teams are kind of even anyway. Tor I would argue Toronto and Washington are very even. If you look at the last two games, Raptors win last night by one point. They won two weeks ago in D.C. in overtime. I mean, these teams are close. Washington came out on the short end of the stick. But they're still a team that could win one or two rounds in the playoffs as currently constructed. They're having a little bit of a, I don't even know if it's a slump right now. They've lost a few games. But as we come back from All-Star break and go down the stretch, they're a very dangerous right, okay. team. And they could still finish second. You're a huge Washington fan. And despite the fact I'm not even. <laughs> I just know what I saw. Okay, the one and six against the Toronto Raptors in their last six games, of course. Lost two straight season series. But let's flip to the side to the Toronto Raptors now. You, you talk about people are going overboard on what's happening with the Wizards right now. 
But, I mean, in Toronto, people are overreacting when the Raptors win, when the Raptors lose. So I'm going to ask you guys, which team do you think we have right now? Is this the same team that started the season super hot? Or is, that, is it the team that hit the wall in the Western Conference and kind of struggled through? Like, which team is it right now at this point halfway through? Do you believe that they are where they need to be moving forward and could possibly take a second-round series? Or are they still finding challenges that they haven't figured out yet? For me, they're halfway in the middle. It's like this mixed bag, snowstorm, rainstorm. They've got James Johnson coming in the mix as a starter. DeMar's back and healthy. They're figuring it out, man. They're still building their identity right now midseason. I think this team is exactly who we thought they'd be, except that they're progressing with, with young... Romeo Cornell in the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying these guys, like JV's finding his role. James Johnson is finally back in back in his role, and they're trying to figure out how they want to play these guys. Like, I, I think everyone looked at this team saying they have DeMar DeRozan, they have Kyle Lowry, uh, Lowry in the backcourt, one of the best backcourts in the league, uh, no doubt. But the three position has always been up in question. Right. The, the four has had some consistencies, some inconsistencies. The five, JV, when he's playing, you know, inconsistencies here and there. So I think it's, there's a lot of talent, but it's still a growing team. I mean, people forget that this team is really young at a lot of their key positions, and, and they need to adapt. I mean, Kyle Lauer being 28, 29, yes, he's established, but he's having to be that veteran presence, which he has shown and he's established. I mean, I think that's the one thing that stood out for me watching him against John Wall, just his ability to lead the Raptors, where John Wall was just saying, I'm the most talented guy on this team, follow me. All right. Hey, Ro Romeo Cornell, great. <laughs> Great reference, although I'm pretty sure it was Danny Green. Oh, it was they Danny Green. They are who we thought they were. Uh, Here's, I think both of you guys, my, my dudes from Montreal, are hitting the point here. You said they're building. Yep. You said they're progressing. And I think that's the stage they're at. I think in November, they peaked. They kind of peaked mm -hmm. too early because you don't really win anything in November, although they're happy to have those wins. They're going to come in handy. I think they kind of realized they got to a point where hey, there's some other really good teams here, and we're going to lose some games, and we're going to have to get better. And right now they're in that um, this position where they are winning games because they're good, because they have talent, and they have some experience now. But they are definitely at a point where they're building, and they want to be at peak prime performance end of March into April and hopefully into May. All right, now let's get to it, of course. The Toronto Raptors get three big wins going into the All-Star break. No games to play during the All-Star break, but an opportunity for a big win if Kyle Lowry can win, mm -hmm. of course, and that's All-Star Saturday Night Skills Contest. I'll start with uh, Dan. What do you, how do you think he fares? First time, rookie in the, jitters. In the, in the skills competition? In the skills. <laughs> this, I mean, I like that he's playing in it. It actually means uh, I'm probably going to watch. Uh, is, is Steph Curry in it? I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't, I mean, Lowry's got, he's got the skills that any point guard needs to have, but I think what makes him such a good player is his heart and his hustle and determination. And they so don't really translate I don't, well I don't know if that's really going to be on display in, in the skills. I, I Okay, Montreal boys, win or no? We got no time. We got to go to break. I'm, I'm going to say no. I think his skills are a little bit streaky, and uh, like you're saying, it depends on the leadership a little bit more. I think the top end talent guys are going to take it. Speed wise, Isaiah Thomas will take that. One. <laughs> All right, okay. Listen, still more to come here on Canada's Home for Talking Hoops. This is the Hangout, and we got to go BGH, big game hunting. Unfortunately, we were looking for some big games on the court last night. There was a big one in the Grizzlies' Thunder, but the Grizzlies definitely underperformed. We'll break it all down on the other side of the break. Hangout!